Um, it's, it is all review, okay? The first three sections we're gonna do in this next chapter is exponentials, exponential equations, exponential properties, logs, the basic rewriting into an exponent back and forth, and properties of logs, the expanding, compacting. Do you kind of remember that stuff? We're gonna review it, okay? I'm not expecting you to remember it all right now, but the bottom line is that you have to be able to do all this for a quiz next Thursday without a calculator. Now, when we do the applications problems in a minute, I did put a couple applications on there, but I said just set them up. Okay, no calculator, so you obviously don't have to solve them. You will get to use the little, what color was it? Yeah, another little yellow sheet of formulas, okay? So, yeah, that's not on for a little while yet. That's for the whole chapter. All right, here we go. Uh, what's the difference between the first one and the second one? Yeah, so what's the property here? We get two. What do we do here? Yes. Yeah. You are applying the five to both of those things in there. They're there five times. You'd have an A squared, A squared, A squared, A squared, A squared. So if you wrote out A, 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 you'd have to have, what? I don't know. I was just making that up. Okay. What's different on this one is that it is also two to the fifth. What's two to the fifth? Oh, no, that's wrong. No, I I wrote it wrong. It's still A to the 10th, B to the 20th, right? Okay. I'm skipping and leaving some for you to do. Um, what's going on on number six? 16 plus, or this is G. G, it's not a six. A little dyslexic. 4 to the 0, anything to the 0 is 1. What does that mean? 1 fourth and 1 sixteenth, right? 1 over 4 squared, okay? All right, so if we add, we get 21, and this would be 4 sixteenths plus 1 16th would be 5 16th. What if we're multiplying those numbers, though? Come on. Where's my academic team, people? What do you... Sixteen times 1 16th? Four times 1 fourth? One, everybody okay? We're multiplying. So 16 times 1 16th is one. Okay. Um, oh, please don't make me cry. What's, what's, and? I have a teacher who used to, in Algebra 1 would put this concept on every single quiz because it's huge, right? If you don't know the difference between those two. And do kids get it wrong? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this is just scientific notation. This would be 400, yes? Plus what? 80 plus... Seven plus point four plus. Okay, so this is like my kids used to have to do this all the time. Do you have to do this all the time back in in elementary? Like, I just remember in elementary school they would have to not that they had to do a lot of scientific notation, but they would have to write out like there's a four in the hundreds and the eight in the tens. And, Okay. 
Yes. Yeah. If you, if this had stayed on there, it would have been 25. Yeah. I just wiped some of them out because there was too many. Um. Did I leave those on there? Did I leave N and O on there? Okay. Oh, you. Okay. I got to move on to the lesson. But you're multiplying here. What's three times one third? One. One. What's two times negative one half? Negative one, which would be written as, okay. Uh, what's happening on P? W times one over W, which is one. This one is W plus one over W. If I made you get a common denominator, what would you have? Right? Common denominator, this becomes W squared over W plus one over W. Okay, what does this mean? No. Okay, it's the cubed root of 27 to the 4th, or 27 to the 4th and then cubed rooted, which now you should be able to do this one in your head. What's the cubed root of 27? 3 to the 4th. Okay, and this one's going to be what? Same thing, but it's in the denominator, right? Yes. So it's going to be... All right. Um, yep, I'm leaving you the rest. Okay. We are going to worksheet one, uh, B2. One B, something. One B. Okay. Um, this whole section is supposed to be review. You need to know how to graph exponentials. I will tell you on the no calculator quiz that there's like, you just have to graph a basic, like, two to the x or three to the x, okay? It's not anything really messy. You also have to know how to write the transformations, okay? I'm not going to give you a transform graph to graph without a calculator. And exponential growth and decay questions, including compound interest. And like I said, on the quiz, you don't have to solve them. You just have to set them up. All right. I love this. It says, we've been doing algebraic functions so far this year, okay? But in this chapter, we're going to do exponential and logarithmic functions, which are considered to be transcendental functions. Isn't that awesome? We're doing, trans they transcend algebra. All right. It's, guys, x is up in the exponent, right? That's what's going on on all these, that the x is up in the exponent. Okay, non-examples here, this is a 5 to the pi. And the only reason this is a non-example, does anyone know why this is a non-example? It's always going to be 1, so it's just a linear function, really. It's just a line, y equals 1. But otherwise, when x is up in the exponent, it's called an exponential function. All right? We also have... Basically, this is saying there's some initial value A. And then we're going to multiply by some B, which is a rate, to some power of X. So what happens when we have A times and B here is 2? Is that going to grow or decay? going to grow. You're multiplying by 2 over and over and over, right? What would make it decay? Okay. A negative 
is not the same thing, but yes, it needs to be less than one. What Michael said, it's got to be less than one. So if you're multiplying by a half over and over and over, it's going to get smaller. So what's the generalization, guys? Anything over one is going to make it grow, and anything between zero and one is going to make it decay. We're not looking at negatives here, okay? Any questions? All right. So an exponential growth function looks like this. Do you have this on your notes? Okay. You might want to star or highlight these. You have to be able to state the domain. Now, when you look at this, the first time you don't get a calculator anyway, but when you look at this on your calculator, it's going to look like it stops. Okay, it's going to look like it just stops here. It doesn't. It keeps going. It just gets incredibly close to the x-axis. So its domain is all real numbers. If you think about it, if you had 2 to the x, I can put any number in there as a power I want, right? Even negative numbers, it would just become fractionally small. All right, the, the range, you will only get positive numbers out. The y-intercept to anything to the zero power is what? One. So the y-intercept is always zero, one. It will never cross the x-axis. And the asymptote is the x-axis or y equals zero. I would accept either one of those. That's the proper equation for the x-axis. Everybody got those? five things they understand that's going to be on the quiz okay exponential decay is the same thing it's just going smaller instead of bigger so if you had a one half to the x when you put in a one you get a half you put in a two you get a fourth but what happens when you put in a negative one you get two when you put in a negative two you get four, so it's growing on this side. Okay, it still goes through zero, one. It's still all real numbers for domain, and the range is only positive numbers. It has no x-intercept, and the asymptote is the x-axis, or y equals zero still. Any questions? This is also always increasing and this one is always decreasing i don't think it asks increasing and decreasing on the quiz the no calculator quiz probably should but it doesn't all right so this is one that uh, in theory you could be able to put on a quiz because it's really not that complicated okay so you put in a one you get out what One, one third. You put in a negative, I put in a zero, you get out one. You put in a negative one, you get out. Okay, so could you easily find me three ordered pairs, even though there's one that's a fraction? Okay, with it out a calculator, right? All right. So unfortunately, this one doesn't start out nice. What's the parent function here? y equals 2 to the x, yes. What transformations have occurred? On the x, they did minus 1, so that would be, yes, shift right, 1. And then the plus 1 on the whole function would be up 1. All right. So if I do 2 to the x, it would go here, it would go through two, one half going this way. Don't draw this one necessarily. If I put in a two to plain old two to the x, I'd get out what? Guys, y equals two to the x. If I put in a two, I get out four? Okay, so here's the original one. What are we supposed to do to it? Right one? and up one, right one, and up one. Oh, there's a point here, right one and up one. 
Okay, what's going to happen? Does it cross the x-axis? No, it actually has an asymptote y equals 1. That's right. Because it had, it didn't cross here, and now it's been moved up 1. All right, domain. Okay, range. Yep, it can't hit 1, so it stopped parentheses 1 to infinity. Again, I would not ask you this question with the transformations unless I let you have a calculator, okay? Intercepts. When you put in a 0, we get 2 to the negative 1 plus 1, which is 1 and a half. Yep. I'll just leave it a decimal. It's the only intercept. End behavior. As x approaches negative infinity, well, we usually do the y first, sorry. Y is approaching, what's happening on the left? It's close to 1, yep. As x approaches infinity, y is also approaching infinity. And the whole thing is increasing. Good. What's what? Ah, oh, okay. All right. Just real quick, look up here. I just want to go through these transformations, guys. What would a plus 1 in the exponent do, or on to the x? Left, okay. A negative on the x, that's really this. Yes, it would reflect it across what? Okay. What would a negative 3 out front do? Vertically stretch and reflect it over the X. Okay, that's on the quiz because you should just be able to describe those transformations because it's been on pretty much about every other quiz forever, right? Transformations? All right. There is a famous number called E. Anybody ever remember this? It has the exponent. Um, it's the inverse of a natural logarithm. Okay. The definition of E is this. It is the limit as 1 plus 1 over n to the n. Because look what happens, guys. If I put a 1 into that expression, I get out a 2. And if I keep putting higher and higher and higher numbers in, look what happens. It gets closer and closer to some random irrational number, which is E. That's the definition, okay? It is... It shows up all the time in nature, okay? Things grow and decay with this factor. It's used in Newton's law of cooling. It's used in a lot of, it's used in exponential, um, no, continuous interest. Do you remember that? Hertz? Does that sound a little familiar? All right. Okay. This is, it's called the E is called the natural base, or again, it's called E. Um, so, E to the, if you were graphing E to the X, it's like two point something, okay, guys? So, if we put in a one, we'd get out E, which is two point something. If we put in a zero, we'd get out what? One. If we put in negative 1, we'd get out 1 over e, which is like a half-ish. So the normal one would go here, here, and somewhere up here. Okay? 
x, e to the x, because it's basically 2.1 or something, okay? What happens when I change it to negative x? Yes, this is a reflection over the y-axis because it's really saying it's on the x directly, okay? Does this tie it into what we've seen in the past? All right, so all of the values are going to be flipped from positive to negative and negative to positive. So the intercept stays here, but these values are going this way. Can somebody do um, e to the negative 2 just so we have one more value? E to the negative? Oh. Okay, so if it had a negative and we put it into here, it would become positive. That's my bad. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's up here. Because it's e to the negative, negative two, so it's e squared. Okay, that was my... Nope, I promise there's no... There are e questions. Because, but not graphing, okay? Because eventually we're going to talk about things like this. And the log of E is 1, and you could bring the exponent out in the front. So that's just 2. So I could put that on the no calculator quiz. But we'll, we're not there yet, so don't panic. I'm just saying it might show up. Okay, domain, we're doing the blue one here. Domain. Okay, quickly range, intercept, asymptote, y equals zero, end behavior, y goes up on the left. And it gets close to zero on the right. And the entire blue graph is decreasing. Okay, I do hereby soundly swear you will not have to graph an E. I can pretty much tell you right now it's probably like either y equals 2 to the x, or y equals 3 to the x, or y equals 1 half to the x, or 1 third to the x. That's about it. I don't, Because anything else is hard to fit on the graph paper even. All right. Do these look familiar to anybody? Okay. I didn't, it wasn't written, you can't write this on your sheet, okay? You got to leave it alone. But if you want to write in your notes, I always called this, when I taught Algebra 2, original times 1 plus or minus the rate to the x. That's exponential growth or decay. This is the same thing. It just says n sub 0 is the initial amount. R is the growth rate or decay rate. And it can be negative, so it's plus or minus. T is time. Okay, it's just another way of writing it. This is continuous growth or decay. So we'll talk more about an example of that. But continuous interest is pert, and that's right here on your sheet. P is present value. R is the interest rate as a decimal, and T is time. And then compound interest. Okay, you get to use the formula. But it's present value times 1 plus R as a decimal divided by number of compoundings times number of compoundings times time all in the exponent. So let's find an example or two. I don't think we care about that. We ran over that. Yeah, I'm thinking we're good. All right, example one, a biology professor estimates initial population of a colony of cells is 100. 
the cells reproduce at a rate of 25% per week. So what are we going to multiply by? What is the expected value in six weeks? To the sixth power, yes? Type, type, type. I would ask you to set this up on the quiz Thursday, but not solve it. Okay. I don't think anybody wants to spend the day doing this problem without a calculator. 381.47, or about 381 cells. Questions? All right. Lance has a bank account. He will invest $1,000 at a rate of 5%, that's 0 0.05, compounded continuously. If there are no other deposits, what will it be worth after 10 years? It has to say the word continuously in order to use PERT, okay? So present value times E to the times 10. Now, when you type that in, if you use guys, if you use this button right down here to get the E, the LN button, it's really helpful. Okay. Was it a thousand, guys? A thousand and then do second and LN right above on up to because it brings up an exponent puts you right in the little exponent thing, even on your newer ones. And there you want 0 0.05 times 10. Oh, I forgot the five. Otherwise, I think if you do this E, you have to like go to the exponent. So it's easier. $1,648.72. One Yeah, E is on the calculator twice. It's over here oh. above plus, isn't it? I can't above see, but divide. above divide. Yeah, that's a divide. See, I can't see. All right, but use the LN. It's better. <clears throat> All right. Um, this one is compounded quarterly. Does anybody remember how this goes? Initial amount. And then it's 1 plus, use your little yellow sheet. Yes, got to move. This is R, two places over. And then the interest, you're not given that full interest every single time it's compounded because it's going to compound four times a year, so you're given one-fourth of the interest each time. So you put over 4 to the what? Four times a year for 10 years. So it's going to be to the 40th power. So when we type it on the calculator, <clears throat> I already forgot. How much was it? 5,000? And then in the parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.085 divided by 4. You don't need extra parentheses in there because it knows to divide before it adds. Okay? Order of operations. And then to the power of, if you have an older calculator, you have to do parentheses 4 times 10. You can just do 40 absolutely, but if you're going to multiply it, you need the parentheses so that the, both those numbers stay in the exponent. If On the newer calculators, it just goes up in a little box, right? But $11,594.52, did someone else get that? Did you do 0.085? Oh. Everybody okay? All right. Um, can we just set some of these up real fast? You guys can go back and type them if you want, but how would you do this? This is the initial, then what does it say? 
increasing at a rate of 0.5%. So B1 plus, be careful, 0.5%, we move it back twice, 0 0.005. And from 2007 to 2020 would be? Oh, I can't write. So you would just type that. But what would you have to label this one? Yeah, it's quadrillion thermal units. Yeah, whatever you get. All right. Can you just set this one up for me, anybody? <gasps> oh, yeah. Okay. So there was 10. And how long ago was that? A year ago. And it's growing this much every month. So what do we want to do? No, it's not compound. It's just, it's if it's doing that every month. Yes. We just want to say one point, uh, uh, no, that's not right. Try again, how far? Point 0.10% would be R equals point 0.1. And it's done it every month for a year, so it would be 12 times. Okay, can I move on without worrying about an answer? Uh, do you have this question? Okay. Population of a town is declining. Oh, first time we have to do what? Yes. So 12,426 people declining. What am I going to do? One minus what? 0.06. Predict the population in five years and ten years. If it's decreasing annually, so... That's this. It's just going down every year. So you would need a 5 and a 10 for both answers. This has two answers. And what are you going to do when it says continuously, though? Yeah, except you got to be careful what's happening. E to the, yes, negative 0 0.06 for... Five years or negative 0 0.06 for 10 years. Okay, continuously, annually just means every year. Okay, the answers are going to be close but not exactly the same. In other words, 10 years later, it's Increasing at this rate versus ten or decreasing at this rate. Which one do you think is going to be, because it's decreasing, is going to end up a little bit smaller? Continuous, yes. Continuous interest. If you're earning continuous interest on your money, it grows faster. So in this case, because it's decaying, it will decay a little bit faster. All right. You have this question? Okay. Uh, data is kind of growing exponentially. Identify the rate of growth. Okay, so let's talk about this. There was 1.94, and it was growing. How often? How much? How many years did it grow? Ten years, and it became 2.25. So if we divide this. Don't distribute, can't do out to the 10th. Guys, everybody looking up here? We divide 1 plus R to the 10th equals 2.25 over 1.94. What do we still need to do now to get rid of that 10? 10th root, okay? And there is a way to do 10th root on the calculator, but what else does 10th root? One-tenth power, yes. So if I take this side, 
to the 1 tenth power, I'll just have 1 plus r. So I need to do this side to the 1 over 10 power, whew, which is also 0.1. Oops. Two point two five divided by one point nine four and then to the one tenth power. Anybody getting one point oh one point oh one four nine? So if we subtract the one, it's growing point oh one four nine, which is roughly what percent? 1.49 or almost 1.5 percent. Um, that was the growth rate, okay, and the model would be the starting population, whoops, I don't know where I got a 3, 1.94 times 1 plus 0.0149 to the X, where X is years. Okay. Now they want to know when it's going to surpass 2.7 million. We don't know how to do that yet, except by graphing. Okay, we'll eventually know how to solve that with a logarithm. So in your graphing calculator, darn it. See, I figured it out. You guys, you guys have taught me how to get rid of that. Okay. Um, what do we put in? I forgot already. 1.94, thank you. Times, can I just add and get 1.0149? 1. Okay, to the power of x, and we want to know when that hits what? 2.7. Now, we need to think about what's happening here for a scale. x is what? Years. Is it going to hit in 10 years? Don't we already know the population in 10 years is 2.25? So it's got to go out. I'm going to go 0 to 25. I don't know. Now, no, because you have to get an exact value. In Algebra 2, they let you just estimate. You could use the table and say it happens somewhere between year 7 and year 8, okay? No more. You need to graph it and find the intersection point. So we want it to go up to what, guys? 2.7 million, right? So this is going up pretty slowly. So can I just do 0 to 5? Okay, it's going up ever so slowly. Um, oh, it does hit before. I don't know how many years I put in. What did I put in, guys? I did 25? Okay. I need to find the point of intersection. So 22.4 years, is that what someone got? All right, so one more time. What we did was we put in Y1, 1 1.94 times 1.0149 1 to the X. And in Y2, we put 2.7. And we graphed with a window 0 to 25 and 0 to 5. And this was going up ever so slowly. And we found the intersection point at 22. Four years. Okay, thank you. Oh my gosh, we got the notes done. And Bruzo didn't even get close. We rock. Okay, guys. I know this looks like it. This is all of what goes together. If you don't get. All of the, like, I left four application questions off to look at next week if we needed to, but this is everything that's assigned, okay? Guys, this homework check is a lot of book work, and it's due next Thursday, so please don't leave this all till next week. No. No. Do these this weekend. Guys, seriously, this should be a really good quiz. This is all review. All review.